Hey folks, this is Kalani. Season 4 is right on our doorstep. It goes live this very next reset, so it's pretty much it for Season 3. We're all moving on. But there hasn't been a lot of specific information about very important changes coming, which has left a lot of players a bit confused and in the dark about what Season 4 is even going to look like. What is there to do in Season 4? Are the rewards going to be worth the time investment? How high are the item level drops going to be? How much is changing? Which new dungeons can we run? What's up with the weird fated raid stuff and is any of this season 4 experimental content actually going to be fun? Well let's break it all down, see how everything is going to work and make sure all of these season 4 changes are fully explained. Before we jump in be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. One of the biggest draws for this new season are the Fated Raids, so let's explain those first. All three Shadowlands Raids, and that's Castle Nathria, the Sanctum of Domination, and the Sepulchre, the first ones, will be scaled up. So all of the bosses will have more health, deal more damage, and they will just be more difficult in general. They also have special affixes to change up the fights, they drop higher item level loot, they have some special currencies that let you gear up in different ways, and they let you experience the raids again as current content. There are also new mounts, new titles, and new achievements to earn, so there are plenty of rewards on offer. Now I'm not going to say this is new content per se, it's more like rehashing old content, except instead of just having one raid to work through, we get three raids to work through, and anyone who didn't get to see the first two raids of the expansion are in for a treat, because there are some really cool bosses in there. That's way better than just ploughing through the sepulchre of the first ones for another five months. Something important to note about the Fated Raids is that they won't be active all at the same time. Only one raid will be the Fated Raid for any given week to start with, and we actually have a bit of a schedule to go by already. In a recent blue post, the dev team said that Castle Nathria will kick things off as the Fated Raid on August 2nd, then it moves on to Sanctum for the next week, Sepulchre for the week after that, and then it keeps going on that set rotation. So the raids will go in the same order they came out, basically, which makes sense to me, but the very interesting part of this blue post is at the bottom where it says, and so on, until the rotation is removed and all raids are fated later in the season. I guess that means eventually all three raids will be fated at the same time, which is going to be a crazy number of bosses to work through in any given week, but I assume by that point most raiders will have most of their gear already. But if you ever want to check which raid is the current fated raid, just open up your dungeon journal. The default shortcut for that is Shift J, I believe, so go to the raid tab for Shadowlands and the current fated raid will have this pentagon icon next to it. It has a few details about what a fated raid is, but it's always going to be very easy to check without having to rely on the schedule or remembering which raid comes next. Main reason you want to run through a fated raid and kill these bosses again is for the higher item level loot that they drop. Everything has been increased across the board here, so looking for raid is going to drop item level 265 to 272 gear, normal will drop 278 to 285 gear, heroic will drop 291 to 297, and Mythic will drop 304 to 311. That's a huge bump of what these raids used to award, and it's a large increase from our Season 3 rewards as well. So anyone and everyone is going to want these higher item level rewards, especially when you consider that Fated Raids are arguably going to be easier than normal raid bosses, and all of this gear can be thrown into the Creation Catalyst to turn it into tier gear as well. Besides the fated rotation, the bosses being harder and scaled up, and the loot drops being higher item level, the main major difference in the fated raid is going to be the affixes. You heard me right, affixes in raids. There are four affixes, and each boss will be empowered by one affix at a time. The affixes also rotate as the weeks go by, so the next time you see a fated boss, it will probably play out at least a little differently. Creation Spark sounds like it's going to be a magic debuff that deals damage over time and when you dispel it a projectile flies off onto the ground. If that projectile doesn't get sucked by a player it explodes, probably dealing nasty raid wide AoE damage, but if you do soak it you get a powerful fated infusion which increases the flow of time and the movement speed of any player within the radius. So dispel it, stack up on the soak and get some free bloodlust. Reconfiguration Emitter is an ad that tries to constantly cast raid-wide AoE damage and its damage increases the longer it's alive, so you need to kill them ASAP. When you kill them, you get a Fated Infusion buff that increases all secondary stats. 
Protoform Barrier sounds like you're going to have a different kind of ad that provides a shield to all enemies. The shield might take both damage and healing to break it, which is kind of cool. And when it breaks, the amount of damage dealt to the shield is dealt to any enemies, so it's not wasted damage. And then players get a health and throughput fated buff. Chaotic Essence sounds like a bit of a weird one. Summons an orb that you can interact with. This activates the foe, which spawns additional enemies. For each one slain, more spawn, and when time runs out, players get a buff dependent on how many adds they killed. I guess you're gonna wanna bring some big AoE classes for this affix. As you can see, all of these affixes follow a very similar theme. They make the fight more difficult to begin with, but if you handle the affixes appropriately, you are rewarded with some big buffs to make the fight easier overall. So as long as you don't ignore the affix and you actually do mechanics, all the fated raids should prove easier and faster to clear through than their normal counterparts. Another very important change with Fated Raids is a special new currency. When you first enter a Fated Raid, you will receive a quest automatically. This quest will ask you to kill a certain number of Fated Raid bosses, and when you complete it, you'll be rewarded with a puzzling cartel diner. You will then be given the same quest again, but with a lower boss kill count, and you complete this quest up to three times for a grand total of three puzzling cartel diners. Now there's only one use for this special new currency, to buy raid loot from the vendors in Ouroboros. You can find these three new vendors next to the weekly vault in the Hall of Holding. There's one vendor for each raid, so one for Castle Nathria loot, one for Sanctum loot, and one for Sepulchre loot. So it's easy to sort through what you might want to buy. Each piece of loot will cost you one diner, so you can buy up to three pieces of loot using this currency. It's not all of the loot from raids, sadly, it is only weapons and trinkets available from these vendors, but they are usually the most important pieces that you feel the most if you happen to get unlucky and basically don't get them, and that's all this really is, it's bad luck protection. I hope they expand upon this idea in the future and give us real full raid loot vendors to help you actively gear up, but that's not what these vendors are. Still, something is better than nothing, and at least you know you will eventually get your best in slot weapon and trinkets, either from the raid as drops or from buying these items from the vendors directly. If you're looking at this thinking, that's nice and all, but most of these trinkets suck all sorts of tore and tail, you'll be happy to know that a lot of these trinkets specifically are being buffed. There is a long list of trinkets receiving some big changes going into Season 4, so the trinket tier lists will probably be swapped around at least a little bit. Your best trinket from the past few seasons might not be on top anymore, so keep an eye on the tier lists, and don't throw away trinkets just because they were bad in the past. You'd hate to have to use one of your three diners on a trinket you already threw away way. Another amazing update for raids specifically comes in the form of gear upgrades. Whenever you kill a heroic or mythic fated boss, you'll get a confounding cipher for that difficulty. So there are different ciphers for heroic and mythic, which is very important because after you collect 20 ciphers, you can combine them into an item that allows you to upgrade a piece of gear straight to heroic or mythic difficulty, depending on the ciphers you combined. So 20 heroic boss kills gives you an item to upgrade an item straight to heroic item level, and then 20 mythic kills gives you an item to upgrade to mythic item level. Level. So if you were thinking that these vendor items weren't all too useful because they're only available at normal raid item levels, think again. This also goes for any item you get in the raid, so maybe you get your best in slot weapon, or trinket, or ring, or any tier piece, whatever it may be. If you have that item on normal, but you really want it on mythic, you don't actually have to rely on RNGesus anymore. You don't need that item to drop again, you just have to save up your kills until you get an upgrade item, and you never have to worry about that piece of gear ever again. Having an avenue for upgrading gear outside of simply just getting the drop again is huge for raiding, and I really hope they continue this forward in one way or another. You might think the idea of progressing through all three raids at once, and again, if you already play through these raids, doesn't seem entirely appealing, and I wouldn't really blame you. Pronging on some of these bosses was brutal, especially on Mythic difficulty, but the dev team have said that's not their plan. They don't want this to feel like progression raiding again, more like a laid-back run through some old content that still provides at least something of a challenge. With the affixes in play, that challenge is going to be quite different as well. You'll have to learn how to maximize the different affixes on different fights and work with the various bonuses you get to make the bosses easier. All in all, working through fated raids should be faster and easier. So when you see things like kill 10 raid bosses, that's not going to be the same grind and slog that it was when these raids first opened up. If you cleared AOTC when these raids were current, you will probably smash through the raids on heroic. The same goes for normal mode, for mythic mode, and especially for LFR mode. As an interesting side note, it looks like every difficulty will be fully open from the very first week of season 4 
before, so you can hop straight into Mythic and run everything on LFR from that very first week, so all of the time gates are thrown out of the window. There are some other goodies on offer if the item level bump wasn't enough of an incentive, starting with a slime cat mount. Yes, that's right, yet another option from that mount voting contest is making its way into the game. This time you'll be able to collect Jigglesworth Senior, a rather scary looking slime cat mount. I honestly expected something a bit cuter, I guess, but scary weird skeletal slime cat is also really cool, so I'm not complaining. To get your hands on Jigglesworth, you'll need to complete all three fated raids on normal difficulty or above. That does mean that LFR is not going to count for this one, so you'll have to step it up to normal at least to get the slime cat. Clearing all three Fated Raids on Heroic will reward you with the Hero of Fate title, and then clearing all three Raids on Mythic will reward you with a Teleport spell to each of the three Shadowlands Raid locations. So if you ever wanted to hop back to any of these old Raids in the future expansions, these Teleport spells could be very useful indeed. And then there are also some achievements and feats of strength to collect as well. As an interesting little addition, two weapons will also have their drop rate increased. The Edge of Night, which is a special dagger that Sylvanas drops, and Ray Shalare, the special bow that Sylvanas also drops, both of these weapons will drop more often in Season 4, so you should have a higher chance of obtaining these weapons if you really want them. Now, something else that's very interesting for Season 4 and Fated Raids is that if you have already unlocked a raid skip for any of the Shadowlands raids, you'll actually already have that skip going into Season 4 and Fated Raids, so you could arguably skip over most bosses if you really want to, but the real key here is that it won't take you four weeks worth of progress to unlock those skips. So if you very quickly get to the point where your raiders don't need early bosses, you can start skipping through the raid quite early on, providing of course you've already unlocked those raid skips. Another small bonus is that every boss you kill while on the Fated Raid, even for Castle Nathria and the Sanctum of Domination, will now drop Cosmic Flux. You probably have way more Flux than you know what to do with at this point, but if you still need more, the Fated Raids are going to be a good way to get some Cosmic Flux in Season 4. Now something else to keep an eye on are the various Shadowlands World Bosses. These are also going to be scaled up and drop away better loot, but just like with the Raids, it won't be every World Boss at the same time. This will actually follow the Fated Raid rotation, and the Fated Raid will dictate which world bosses are fated for that week as well. So while Castle Nathria is the fated raid, the four zone specific world bosses, Valinor, Mortanis, Oranamonos and Nergash will be fated. Remember that only one of these world bosses spawns per week, so you have to track down which one is active as well. While a Sanctum of Domination is the Fated Raid, Morgath will be the Fated World Boss, and then when it swings around to the Sepulchre of the First Ones, Antros will be the Fated World Boss. So if you want a chance at some higher item level gear without having to pop into the raids, keep an eye on which raid is fated, and then go smack down the appropriate world boss. With all of these loot tables available at higher item levels, you could probably gear up somewhat decently just by killing world bosses. Moving on, let's have a chat about changes coming to the Mythic Plus system. For starters, we'll be running an almost entirely new set of dungeons in Season 4. Instead of the typical Shadowlands dungeons, we will instead have two dungeons from four different expansions. So we'll have the two wings of Tazavesh alongside the two wings of the Mechagon Mega Dungeon, with the two wings of the Karazhan Mega Dungeon, with the Iron Docks and Grimrail Depot thrown in for good measure. So that's our new dungeon lineup. It's going to be quite a change of pace from the set of Shadowlands dungeons we've been running for this entire expansion, and it's going to be very interesting to see how these older dungeons match up to our current expectations. Either way, it's a nice change of scenery for Mythic Plus, that's for sure. That does mean that our Mythic Plus dungeon pool is all over the world this time, but you don't have to worry about how you're going to get to these far-flung places. There are some shiny new portals in Oribos. One leads you over to Gorgron for the two Warlords of Draenor dungeons, one will lead you over to Mechagon for that Mega Dungeon, and then the other one leads over to Karazhan, so every dungeon is covered here. You will have to find your own way back though. With a new season comes a new seasonal affix, and this time we're working with Shrouded. Throughout the dungeon you'll find NPCs with a smoky aura. Those NPCs are actually Dreadlords. Who would have thought? If you defeat a Dreadlord you'll get a stacking buff that provides you with a secondary stat. You actually get to choose your secondary stat at the start of every dungeon, so you'll always be getting something valuable, providing you remember to change it anyway. There's also a mini boss hidden in the dungeon in the same way, who is much harder to kill, but it will give you multiple stacks of your buff. By the end of the dungeon you should be quite a bit more powerful when compared to the beginning, so smashing those end of dungeon bosses should be pretty easy. 
All of the Mythic Plus item level rewards have been massively increased as well, so you're going to be able to get way better loot in this season for running the same level of keys as before. There are some other rewards on the table as well, including a new colour of the Deathwalker mount. This time we'll be collecting a purple and gold version, which at least looks quite a bit different when compared to the other ones. The same model being used again is still kind of lame, but hopefully that changes going into Dragonflight. There's also new feats of strength, new achievements, the Shrouded and Shrouded Hero titles, as well as teleports to each of this season. Season's Mythic Plus Dungeons. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the Valor currency which is used for Mythic Plus gear upgrades will be reset going into Season 4 so you won't keep any of your leftover Valor I'm afraid. So I would dump that on one of the Valor vendors if you don't have any more gear to upgrade but even though your current stockpile of Valor will get wiped out there is something to look forward to as far as Valor goes. The typical weekly Valor cap will not be in place for Season 4 so you can earn as much Valor as you want or need right out of the gate in this new season which means you will also be able to endless upgrade all of your gear as long as you meet the rating requirements and you keep running dungeons to earn more valor. I'll be interested to see how players react to no valor cap to begin with because it's something that Mythic Plus Dungeoneers have been asking for for quite a while now. As you might expect, a new season also means higher item level rewards for PvPers as well. The honor gear will be upgradable up to item level 268, which is item level 285 in PvP content, and then conquest gear will be upgradable up to item level 301, which will be 311 in PvP content. You will need to regrind your rating to upgrade your conquest gear, so good luck in all of those arenas. As far as other rewards go, you can obtain the Eternal Gladiator title, the Eternal Gladiator Soul Eater Mount, which is just another recolor of the same model as previous seasons, as you might expect, a new weapon illusion called Eternal Flux, and new Vicious Warstalker Mount, one for the Horde and one for the Alliance with appropriate armor to match. Now as with the Mythic Plus Valor currency, your PvP Conquest currency will also be reset going into Season 4, so try and use it up or spend it if you can before the season starts, but unlike Valor, Conquest will still have a cap in Season 4. The weekly cap is going to be larger than usual, which will allow you to progress a bit faster than previous seasons, but I wonder why they kept the cap for Conquest while getting rid of it for Valor. It doesn't make much sense to me. It's the last season, it's a short season, it's supposed to be a bit of fun who cares season, so why keep Conquest on a leash. I would just throw all the rules out the window and let people go crazy, but I guess Blizzard thinks the PvPers need to be slowed down a little bit. Now with all these changes in place, there are some significant differences with the Great Vault as well. With different raids and dungeons all being thrown into the mix, the Great Vault is gonna get a bit weird. I imagine we'll see the dungeon loot tables in the Mythic Plus dungeon section, that seems quite straightforward, and the PvP section won't really change much because, well, PvP hasn't really changed much, but how do we go through three entire raids worth of loot all at once on the raid? row? Well apparently it's going to depend on which bosses you kill. When you kill a fated raid boss, that boss's loot table is then added into your great vault options. So the more bosses you kill, the wider variety of loot you'll be able to get in the vault, and that also means that as the weeks progress and the raids rotate through, you'll start to earn more and more gear from different raids. So yes, eventually you can get any item from any raid boss from any of the raids, but not until you've killed it at least once. Alright, so that's most of the major changes to the end game content types we can take part in, but what about some of these other systems that we've been progressing through and constantly upgrading with every patch or new season? What about tier gear, for instance? Well, tier gear isn't changing. Tier sets will work, the bonuses are still the same, you can still use your old tier gear, and tier gear will still drop from the Sepulchre raid and at the higher item levels when the raid is fated. The other two raids will not drop any tier gear, but any of the gear that they do drop can be used in the creation catalyst. So no matter which raid you run, if you get a higher item level piece of gear that shares a slot with tier gear, you can turn that piece into tier gear. This is probably going to be your main way of upgrading the item level of your tier tier gear, seeing as the first two weeks of Season 4 will have the two older raids, which cannot drop tier gear directly, so the Creation Catalyst is going to be very busy in the first few weeks for sure. Speaking of the Catalyst, all of your charges from Season 3 should carry over to Season 4, so if you haven't used the Catalyst much, you should have a lot of charges saved up to let you create plenty of tier gear from the new season. If you don't have many charges saved, you'll have to wait until more charges come through, but the rate at which you gain charges is pretty quick already, and should only get faster as the season goes by. Okay, that makes sense, but what about legendary gear? Is there another rank we need to do, some more Torghast we have to run, or another currency to collect? This one is simple. No. 
nothing at all. There are no changes for legendary gear. No upgrades, no higher item levels, no new crafting recipes, no triple legendary, or nothing. Absolutely nothing. Legendary gear is not changing at all in Season 4, which also means eventually your legendary gear will be your lowest item level pieces if you do higher end Mythic Plus, Mythic Raiding, or higher end PvP, which is kind of weird. Alright, well what about crafting? Crafters marks or crafted gear in general? This is another area with zero changes. There's nothing new to craft and no higher item level marks to collect, so crafting and crafted gear is also not changing. Conduits are another system that won't see any real updates. There are no new conduits to collect in any of Season 4 content. The max item level for conduits is staying at 278. Now, Fated Raids will drop 278 conduits on normal Heroic and Mythic, so they will be easier to obtain for sure. The Tazavesh conduit drops will also be higher item level, up to the 278 cap, but the other dungeons will not have conduits added to their drop pool from what I understand, so getting any conduit upgrades, if you don't have them already, might be a bit weird from Mythic Plus this time around. Now you might remember that a big conduit skip item was introduced with Season 3 of Shadowlands, but it required high level end game achievements like clearing the entire raid on Mythic. Well that item has had its restrictions removed. You should be able to bind the Vessel of Profound Possibilities from your Covenant Quartermaster without any of the previously required achievements, but it will cost 10,000 Cosmic Flux. Sockets are another feature that gets shifted around every season, and this is actually something with kind of an update. Old Season 3 socket items will become useless, as you might expect, and a new Season 4 socket item will be available from the exact same vendor for the exact same currency, but the price is going to be reduced. So now you only need 3 tokens of merit, down from 6, to buy a socket in Season 4, but besides that it remains the same as before. Something else that's kind of staying the same is Cosmic Flux. This is one currency that does not get reset or wiped going into Season 4, so you will carry all of your Cosmic Flux into the new season, which probably doesn't mean that much in the grand scheme of things, but at least you should have plenty of Flux to do all of your tier gear upgrading. Now you may have noticed that there aren't really any significant changes for casual players. Their main source of gear upgrades haven't really been touched, so the gear you got from Xerath Mortis and the Cypher system and even the Sand One Relic currency hasn't been upgraded alongside the other gear sources for Season 4. So unless you raid, do Mythic Plus Dungeons or PvP, you don't have too much to look forward to in the new season. As a sort of pittance change, Sandworn Relics will now be account-wide, so that's nice, I guess. Though honestly, Sandworn Relics should have been account-wide to begin with, so it's not really anything to get super excited about. And then let's round out this video with some quick class buffs and nerfs. I'll be honest, I expected way more balancing tuning here. There are definitely some outliers still in Raider Mythic Plus especially, but I guess everyone is hard at work on Dragonfly instead of Season 4. Balanced Druids have a small buff, Starfall damage was increased by 15%. For Survival Hunters, Raptor Strike, Mongoose Bite and Kill Command damage all increased by 15%, Wildfire Bomb and any Wildfire Infusion variants now deal reduced damage when hitting more than 8 targets, so their mass AoE potential has been taken down a notch, but their single target was increased to compensate. For Arcane Mages, Clear Casting Duration was increased to 20 seconds, up from 15 seconds. For Windwalker Monks, Spinning Crane Kick damage was increased by 5%. Protection Paladins will get a 5% armor increase, and the Holy Shield talent will increase block chance up to 20% from 15%. Shadow Priest will see Mind Seer damage increased by 30%, Shadow Crash damage increased by 25%, and Searing Nightmare damage increased by 15%. Destruction Warlocks get a 5% damage increase to Chaos Bolt in PvE combat, a 20% increase to Incinerate and Immolate, and a 10% increase to Conflagrate in PvE combat. Their set bonus will also no longer grant Reign of Chaos, drastically reducing their potential shard generation. So a large AoE nerf here for the most part, with some single target buffs to try and offset the change for raid encounters. And then Protection Warriors get a buff to ignore pain. The Absorption effect has been increased by 30%, and the Absorb cap is now based on max health. And that's kind of it right now. Definitely not the massive sweeping changes we usually expect to see with the new season, but then again, Season 4 is kind of a different season. It's more of a let's change a few things up to keep everything from getting too stale, rather than here's a massive chunk of new content to enjoy. With Dragonfly Alpha well underway, it's not too surprising that Season 4 doesn't have too much going into it. Just enough to keep players interested, but not too much that it starts to take away from Dragonflight. 
But that's everything you need to know about Season 4 of Shadowlands, what's changing, how it all works, and some things you don't need to worry about anymore. Are you going to take part in the Season 4 experiment? Is there any part of Season 4 that you hope makes it into future seasons of Dragonflight? Maybe the loot vendors, the raid gear upgrade options, the no valor cap thing? And do you have any leftover questions about how things in Season 4 are going to work? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to everyone who subscribed on Twitch. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I'll see you next time.